Good evening, everyone. Time for another member update. So let me start by saying that uh, rumors of my demise are greatly exaggerated. Uh, I underestimated the impact of moving across the country, uh, selling a house, getting a new house, and all that is involved with that, including internet service and being mobile. So. Um, I was fairly settled doing updates from a uh, extended stay, but now I'm in a new place. Hopefully things will settle down and settle in and I can get more updates out. So I want to apologize to the people that have sent me emails with problems with the account. I know there are payments that have come in and uh, issues with Bitcoin and issues with uh, subscriptions and uh, probably some of the people who have problems aren't hearing this video because they have problems. I'm going to address those and refund anyone who wants a refund. I want to assure you that uh, everything that's happened is just a result of moving across the country. Let me say though that I'm very glad that we made this move. We have moved from the Midwest to the West Coast we moved to a place in the West Coast that is very secure as far as uh, disasters and uh, we're feeling much safer. So that's where we are. But uh, again, the logistics of this type of move were much greater than anything I would have estimated. And that's the reason for my being incommunicado. That's the reason for my not getting updates. That's the reason for my not answering emails. That's the reason for my not uh, dealing with subscription problems. So I'm going to get caught up on all that stuff. I really want to apologize to you guys. I know that uh, you guys have been the greatest in supporting me. And there's a lot of changes going on right now in the alternative media community. So uh, the alternative media community was pretty much responsible for the election of Trump. Now I'm not saying that, that Trump is an alternative candidate, um, but it was that section of the media. And we know that the Democrats came out with this fake news concept. Anytime you see a uh, idea that just appears suddenly and just uh, explodes on the scene, then you know that that is a, a, a sort of a psyop, a, a planned agenda by somebody, because that's not the way things work. Things just don't explode. Uh, so the fake news thing was a planned reaction, in my opinion, to the election of Donald Trump. Now. I've held out some hope, not a lot of hope, probably a very small amount of hope, that Donald Trump will actually drain the swamp. But uh, I have you know, about a 5% chance that's going to happen. There's a 95% chance that, it, uh, number one, Trump could be a quote-unquote good guy who, who wants to clean things up and do something right while he's living. Uh, but there's also a chance that uh, he, he's just another faction of the powers that be and uh, they're uh, throwing a twist in there. Something like what people have said about Ronald Reagan. A lot of conservatives believe that Ronald Reagan was the uh, the greatest thing since sliced bread. He was the perfect conservative. And we know that Reagan was a Democrat in California and he came on as a conservative, kind of similar to what Trump has done. So I don't want any to, anybody to be uh, hopeful that things are going to be fixed because it's like I said, about a 95% chance things aren't going to get fixed. They're just going to get worse. But uh, there is a small chance that Trump is from somewhere else, 
from outside of this cabal, whatever that is, and we're seeing, uh, I, I, I haven't followed the news, I mean, just sporadically, so I can't really detail the things with the uh, potential prosecutions of um, the Clinton camp, and we know that the Clintons are a, a long-time mafioso criminal family that goes way back and of course connected to I believe the Rockefellers in Arkansas which is their base of operations but uh, I don't want to go too much farther into that we'll follow up on that later so the big news is Bitcoin and what happened this morning so I was actually watching this live as Bitcoin blasted off, you can see right here on the chart, it blasted off from about 74, 7,500 roughly, and it went, it made a, a charge at 8,000, a violent charge at 8,000, you can see that. And then it just dropped off a cliff all the way below 7,000. And the news, this is supposedly the news. Now you have to take all of this with a grain of salt because, um, we just don't know how much of it is true but if you remember the fork that happened in uh, back in August 1st and uh, let me take a side uh, sidetrack here and talk about that you can see here market cap at 207 billion dollars now if we do a if we list them by market cap you can see we've got Bitcoin Ethereum and Bitcoin cash so that split that we had with Bitcoin back in August uh, gave us Bitcoin and Bitcoin cash now Bitcoin cash did not perform the same way that Ethereum classic performed initially although Ethereum classic has kind of dropped off you can see Ethereum Classic only has a $1 billion market cap, and Ethereum has a $29 billion market cap. So Bitcoin has a $122 billion market cap, and Bitcoin Cash has a $10 billion market cap. So combine them together and just doing the price information here, you're talking about 7,341 on Bitcoin, $624. You're talking about $8,000 Bitcoin. Uh, and if you remember my interview with Elijah, I think it was June, don't quote me on that, but I think it was June and I said that we could see a trillion dollar market cap for cryptocurrencies by the end of this year. Now it is November 8th, I'm sorry, days are just bleeding together for me when I'm dealing with all these things but you can see that we're up at 207 billion dollars so it's really not that big of a stretch uh, yeah it's a five-fold move from here but you can see on the chart that that's the kind of thing that we do um, now again we're watching Bitcoin for that parabolic crash because we know that parabolas are always followed by a crash. We don't know when the crash will happen. That's the big thing. Uh, this parabola could actually go all the way up to where this eye is on this uh, tab. And that would be the equivalent price of say $10,000, $11,000, $12,000. That could easily happen. And that happens with parabolic moves. So with a parabolic move, you know it's going to crash but you just don't know where it's going to crash from. So looking at this one, you can see we touched 5,000 and then we got down to, what was that? Uh, it was actually lower than that. I think it was 1,800, but uh, we got a massive crash just back in September. So anyway, let's read the news here. This is the news about this fork that's called off. Bitcoin price goes bananas as currency avoids split. The price of a Bitcoin went on a tear on Wednesday in response to news that proponents of a controversial hard fork had suspended their plans to create a parallel version of the digital currency. As of 1.30 p.m. Eastern Time, Bitcoin was trading near $7,700, which is up nearly 10% in the past 24 hours, a big jump 
even for the notoriously volatile currency. Interesting, they call it a currency. News that the anticipated Bitcoin split had been called came via an email from leaders of the Fork Project, which is known as Segwit2x. The Segwit2x leaders who include prominent Bitcoin figures like Zappo CEO Wences Cesares and Chinese mining pool leader Jihan Wu said they decided to suspend the project due to a lack of consensus in the Bitcoin community. The decision appeared to acknowledge a bitter controversy that boiled over in recent months and led many longtime Bitcoin developers to blast the Segwit2x plan as corporate takeover. If the controversy had not been resolved, the world's most famous cryptocurrency faced the very real possibility of splitting in two with no clear consensus on which version was the real Bitcoin. Well, it doesn't really matter. Uh, I'm going to stop reading here. It doesn't really matter what is the real Bitcoin because the market will decide what is the most valuable coin. And again, I pointed out here that Bitcoin Cash has not performed initially as as well as Ethereum Classic, but now since uh, some recent rallies, you can see that uh, Bitcoin Cash is roughly one twelfth of the market cap of Bitcoin, whereas Ethereum is at thirty billion, and Ethereum Classic is all the way down at a billion. So that's thirty fold. So. Uh, Bitcoin Cash has performed twice as well as Ethereum Classic. But again, we don't know what's going to happen with this, and it really doesn't matter. And I've, I've hammered this point home many times that the reason it doesn't matter is because the, the issue is the idea of a decentralized peer-to-peer -peer cryptocurrency that competes with fiat currencies and you hear it all the time on Zero Hedge or all the other financial sites that cryptocurrencies are a fiat currency. They're the furthest thing from a fiat currency that you can imagine. Uh, it just look at the etymology of the word. Fiat means decree. It means an order. In America you have legal tender laws. That means that the U.S. dollar is legal tender for all debts, public and private. That means that if somebody owes you money, you have to accept that currency. That means that your taxes can be paid with that currency. So it's a decree. It's fiat. The government makes a law that says you have to accept that money. That's the very definition of fiat. Now, cryptocurrencies are the total opposite of that. They are freely floating. They're not dependent upon any government decree. They're decentralized and peer-to-peer. -peer. Their value is strictly determined by the market. And the market consists of individuals in different countries who think that it's a better deal to trade the current fiat currency that they own for a cryptocurrency that they don't own, that this is the key decision, whether it's local Bitcoins, whether it's Poloniex or Bittrex or, and again, if you go to this WorldCoin Index site and click on exchanges, and I covered this a lot, uh, the, the trading volume in these exchanges is phenomenal. You can see Bitfinex is up here at 1.2 billion but BitThumb is almost a billion. Bittrex is number three. And you have to look at this portfolio number here. This is the number of, of alts that are traded. So Bittrex is the big one on the block with uh, Poloniex down here at number six. So you can see that Bittrex is now doing almost twice as much as Poloniex. Now, I have to admit that I was wrong in in predicting that Poloniex would go bankrupt. I still don't know at this point whether Poloniex is actually operating. Uh, you have to remember there were many exchanges that, that got hacked and uh, that uh, lost funds very, uh, through hacks, thefts, 
uh, mistakes. It doesn't matter how they lost them, but there were a lot of exchanges that did that, including um, Crip, uh, I'm sorry, I thought it was uh, Cryptopia, but it was uh, Cripsy. And they actually operated for a couple of years trying to pay back this deficit. So I don't know for sure that Poloniex isn't doing that right now, but you can see that the Bittrex has doubled the volume of Poloniex. And then you have some others coming up here. You can see hit BTC is it has 267 alts. It's doing 300 million dollars. Uh, there's some others that I'm trading on like Yobit, 35 million dollars and I've covered before Cryptopia, but it's only six million dollars. So there's a lot of exchanges. The point I'm trying to make is that there's a diversity of exchanges as well as a diversity of cryptocurrencies. There really isn't a way for them to take this system down and they're just going to get better. The, the, the cryptocurrencies uh, I just read an article today about uh, a new cryptocurrency that's supposed to use your hard drive space. We know that Burst and Sia Coin and already there are a bunch of other coins that already do that. And the idea was to lighten the load on the mining network. But uh, there, those ideas are already out there and uh, there's millions of people pursuing these ideas. Uh, it's not going away anytime soon. So the big question is, What's the next big winner? Because uh, there have been some tremendous winners. And uh, as I catch up here, I'm going to try to share with you what I'm trading as I get back into it. So let's look at some stories here. There's so many stories that I missed in uh, being in transit. But I, I think one of the big stories I want to cover here is this Saudi purge that's going on. Now, I'm going to read this, but before I do, I want you to keep in mind that in the background, behind everything, you have to keep in mind this concept of the petrodollar. Now, I'm not going to say this is gospel truth because I really don't know, but the alleged story is that in the 70s, you remember that Nixon closed the gold window. I think it was 1971. We had uh, the demonetization of the silver coins that went from 64 through 69. We had the, the re-allowing uh, of gold to be owned by Americans because if you remember FDR outlawed the ownership of physical gold for regular citizens. So these things changed roughly in the late 60s, early 70s. Then we had Nixon slamming shut this gold window where foreign countries could trade their dollars for gold. And the story is allegedly that Kissinger worked a deal with the Saudis to create this organization called OPEC. And the purpose was to create this petrodollar. And the idea was that the dollar would no longer be backed by gold, but it would actually be backed by oil. And the way that it worked was that if you wanted to buy oil, you had to buy it with dollars. That was the OPEC cartel agreed to this. So all the oil producing nations in the Middle East agreed that they would only sell their oil for dollars. This has held, given some minor exceptions, such as Iraq, Libya, and some others, I think probably now uh, Qatar, Q-A-T-A-R, it's pronounced Qatar, and some others, and perhaps Saudi Arabia now, uh, are, are looking at a change, and the Chinese have announced their idea of having an oil-backed yuan. So these things are starting to fall apart, and Zero Hedge has frequently posted charts of how long uh, world reserve currencies last and the US dollar is pushing the limit for the longest world reserve currency. So there is a purge going on in Saudi Arabia where people are being assassinated, they're being arrested and I'm going to read a little bit of this and then comment. 
Real motive behind Saudi purge emerges $800 billion in confiscated assets. From the very beginning, there was something off about Sunday's unprecedented counter-coup purge unleashed by Mohammed bin Salman on alleged political enemies, including some of Saudi Arabia's richest and most powerful royals and government officials. It was just too brazen to be a simple power consolidation move. In fact, most commentators were shocked by the sheer audacity with one question outstanding, why take such a huge gamble? After all, there was a little chatter of an imminent coup threat against either, there was little chatter against uh, an imminent coup threat against either the senile Saudi king or the crown prince, MBS, and a crackdown of such proportions would only boost animosity against the current re ruling royals further. Things gradually started to make sense when it emerged that some $33 billion in oligarch net worth was at risk among just the four wealthiest arrested Saudis, which included the media-friendly Prince Alawi. So I'm not going to read the rest of this, but I just want to comment. So this has been a pattern that we've seen. Uh, I, th I think the pattern emerged in Russia. If you remember when uh, the Russian Republic broke up and we ended up with just the main Russian country and all of the eastern provinces kind of fell away. Uh, Putin emerged as the leader of this and we saw the issues with Yukos oil. There were many billionaires and billion dollar companies and we saw a seizure of those companies by the state on alleged corruption charges. We've seen the same thing in China. There are numerous stories I've covered before, I don't have them at hand right now, but numerous stories of Chinese billionaires who disappeared, died, were arrested, uh, were arrested and never seen again, died in prison. Many, many stories about these billionaires and the government ended up seizing the assets. Now we're seeing the same thing in Saudi Arabia. And the question is, why is this happening? Now, the speculation in the story is that it's probably their reserve fund. You can see the Saudi reserves have been dropping. And so this is a pattern we're seeing worldwide. I think the takeaway, probably for most folks, is going to be you really don't want to be a billionaire in any of these countries. Now, I haven't really seen any stories in the U.S. that uh, show that level of corruption. Um, we have the Zuckerbergs, we have the Bezos, we have the Bill Gates, we have the Warren Buffetts. We haven't really seen, at least as far as I'm aware, if you know of some, let me know, but in the U.S. we have not yet seen billionaires just suddenly be arrested and their assets seized. Now that that definitely could happen. And again, I think a takeaway is going to be that uh, you probably want to get rich, but you don't want to get too rich uh, because there's going to be an incentive to just disappear you. And the reason behind all of this is because most, if not all, of the governments of the world are bankrupt. And they have to find reasons to seize assets. Now, I was going to cover this story here on this pension bailout. I've covered this to death, but uh, we, it's just expanding. And we're, we're talking about um, taxes on property going through the roof. And this is one of the reasons, there are many reasons why I sold my property and I'm and now a renter. But uh, I think we're going to see across the board massive increases in local property taxes. And if you don't pay your property taxes, they just take your property. So it really is just, uh, you, you're kind of just renting your property, even if you own it. You're renting it from the government. And uh, given the political climate with uh, how popular it is to, to actually implement any cuts for government orders. I don't see this changing anytime soon. We've got Illinois, we've got California, we've got the Midwest, we've got, these things are gonna blow up 
and uh, we're going to see these like little storms popping up on the horizon, little pop-up storms all through the localities, the states. Um, it's going to happen everywhere. So I'm very glad that personally we've moved to a renting model and I think that if you're in the U.S. in any of these major cities, uh, there's going to be exceptions. North Dakota, South Dakota, Wyoming, other states. But for the most part, if you're in the United States and you own land, you're probably going to be taxed out of it, is my guess. So back to Bitcoin, and I haven't covered silver. I'm going to cover silver and gold, the recent moves. But uh, we've got a crazy amount of action going on in Bitcoin. We're going to watch it sort out. I'm still looking for that top. I'm looking for some kind of parabolic ending uh, and I've been looking for that for quite some time. We know parabolas end with a crash. Uh, it very well could go below this low, which is 3,000. So a correction to support would be 2,000. We could get a $1,500 price. I know that seems ridiculous from where we are, but for most of you who followed me since the beginning, and I started covering Bitcoin when it was like five, ten bucks, we have had those kinds of corrections. Uh, we had a spike to $300 and then we dropped all the way down into single digits, I think, from there. So uh, we have had these corrections in the past and I think one is coming. Again, I don't know when, but uh, it's going to be very violent when it comes. And we'll talk to you next time.